Hey everybody, welcome. We're continuing our reading of the Bible. This is the Jehovah's Witness version. We're in Deuteronomy. This section was actually pretty cool. It was actually very informative. We're in chapter 22, picking up on verse 1, where we left off. And after I finish this, we can try the King's James one. I did have a class where we compared different translations, versions, makings, however you want to word it, of the Bible. And it was really interesting, the language difference, depending on if it was from the 16th century, you know, to a more modern one, and looking at the changes. But anyways, we're on 22. You must not see the bull of your brother or his sheep straying about and deliberately withdraw from them. Okay, so you can't see something going on and then just pull back and be like, I'm going to turn around. You should by all means lead them back to your brother. Okay, you see your brother's sheep out, you bring him back in, you do the right thing. And if your brother is not near you and you have not got to know him, you must also bring it home into the midst of your house and it must continue with you until your brother has searched for it. And you must return it to him. That is the way to that you will do with his ass and that is the way you will do with his mantle. And that is the way you will do with anything lost of your brothers, which gets lost from him and which you have found. You will not be allowed to withdraw yourself. Okay. All right. That's a Christian ethics as we just learned. You must not see the ass of your brother or his bull fall down on the road and deliberately withdraw from them. You should by all means help him raise them. Okay. So if you see him struggling, you gotta help up his bull and not be laying in the road. I think they do that sometimes, right? I watch a couple farming videos and you get to see some of the behavior of the cattle, but it must be difficult. Maybe that's why you need the good dog because it can make them get up. They are stubborn sometimes, right? No garb of an able-bodied man should be put upon a woman. Neither should an able-bodied man wear the mantle of a woman. For anybody doing these things is something detestable to Jehovah, your God. In case a bird's nest happens to be before you in the way, in any tree or on the earth with young ones or eggs, and the mother is sitting upon the young ones or the eggs, you must not take the mother along with the offspring. Okay, so have some respect, right? You're going to go get some, some eggs from a good chicken? Don't, you know, take her to the block as well at the same time. You should by all means send the mother away, but you may take the offspring for yourself in order that it may go well with you, and you may indeed lengthen your days. So with a dairy cow, try to do your best or something like that, maybe. Well, it says eggs, so maybe ducks, geese, different goose. Hmm, that's interesting. In case you build a new house, you must also make a parapet for your roof, that you may not place blood guilt upon your house because someone falling might fall from it. So uh, what is that? I don't know what that is. Type of architecture. You must not sow your vineyard with two sorts of seed. Yeah, I think in Napa Valley, I don't think they would put the Merlot next to the Zinfandels, right? Or the Chardonnays, too close to Sauvignon Blancs. Not sure. We get confused. They put them in the same basket. Unless you're doing a blend, then, you know, you wouldn't want that. But even if you were doing a blend, you'd want the percentages. So you'd want to harvest from the field separately. And then in the processing room, you would decide what ratio you would put in of each grape to then, you know, stamp on the label. You would confuse it and it would harder to trace which plants taste the best because if you have an old vine you can have a mother vine and you can harvest her and keep her alive right so the whole hereditary politics or I shouldn't say politics hereditary practices of uh, vineyards and other types of agricultural fruit bearing trees that is a method they use interesting for fear that the full produce of the seed that you might sow in the product of the vineyard may be forfeited to the sanctuary. Now this is interesting, a sanctuary. Forfeited to the sanctuary. 
You must not plow with a bull and an ass together. I wonder why. Maybe because the donkey is going to get scared of the bull or the bull is going to get distracted and try to knock the donkey over. You must not, because well, one can pull more than the other. And if the bull pulls too heavily, it can like snap the ankles of the donkey. You must not wear mixed stuff or wool and linen together. Maybe because different itchy types. Wool is pretty itchy. Linen is very nice. So if you combine linen and wool together, it would make it itchy and maybe unwearable. Also, the smell of wool is different than linen and wool retains water longer than linen. So if you're sweating, it might soak up the smell differently and then make you stink. You should make tassels for yourself on the four extremities of your clothing with which you cover yourself. Oh, I think that's pretty. Tassels. Those are cool. In case a man takes a wife and actually has relations with her and has come to hate her, and he has charged her with notorious deeds and brought forth a bad name upon her and has said, This is the woman I have taken, and I proceed to go near her, and I did not find evidence of virginity in her. The father of the girl and her mother must also take a birthing forth the evidence of the girl's virginity to the older men of the city at the gate of it. And the girl's father must say to the older men, I gave my daughter to this man as a wife, and he went hating her. And he, Interesting. So, giving her as a wife. It's a very interesting practice of this time. But he says hate her, so they must not be getting along. So if you're not getting along, you got a lot more problems than just that. And here is he is charging her with notorious deeds, saying, I have found your daughter. It does not have evidence of virginity. Now this is evidence of my daughter's virginity. And they must spread out the mantle before the older men of the city. Oh, I heard of that tradition. It's kind of embarrassing. That's kind of, that's embarrassing. And the older men of that city must take the man and discipline him. Oh, okay, so if he embarrasses the woman and she have evidence. Because the, okay, and he can get beat. Oh, that'd be embarrassing. And they must find him a hundred and several shekels and give them to the girl's father. Because he brought forth a bad name upon a virgin of Israel, and she will continue to be his wife. He will not be allowed to divorce her all his days. Uh, they should get a divorce, though. If he got beat, beaten for lying over her and he hates her, she's going to hate him. It's just going to be a house filled with hate. If someone embarrasses you like that and disgraces your family name, I wouldn't want to see their face. Would you? If, though, this thing has proved to be the truth, evidence of virginity was not found in the girl, they must also bring the girl out to the entrance of her father's house, and the men of the city must pelt her with stones, and she must die, because she has committed a disgraceful folly in Israel by committing prostitution in the house of her father. So, that's interesting, in the house of your father sort of has a different vibe to it than a brothel, right? So you must clear away what is bad from your midst. In case a woman... Oh, sorry. In case a man is found lying down with a woman owned by an owner, both of them must then die together. The man lying down with the woman and the woman, so you must clear away what is bad out of Israel. Interesting. So a man visits a prostitute, the prostitute and the customer would be terminated. In case there happened to be a virgin girl engaged to a man, a man actually found her in the city and lay down with her, you must also bring them both out of the gate of that city and pelt them with stones and they must die. The girl for the reason that she did not scream in the city and the man for the reason that he humiliated the wife of his fellow men. So you must clear away what is evil from your midst. Okay, so that's interesting. Didn't scream. Hmm. I wonder what they would say about that. She's supposed to shout for help. Now, the man humiliating someone else's woman, that's quite wrong. If, however, it is in the field that the man found the girl who was engaged, and the man grabbed hold of her and lay down with her, the man who lay down with her must also die by himself. And the girl, you must do nothing. The girl has no sin deserving a death, because just as when a man rises up against his fellow man, and indeed murders him, even a soul, so it is with this case. So if he just attacks her, well, that's, that's very sad, right? For it was in the field that he found her. The girl who was engaged screamed, but there was no one to rescue her. Aha, uh -huh. it's the sort of the circumstance, so. One must scream, make notice, and ask for help. 
not willingly enter into a situation of dishonor. Very interesting. All right, somber topic, very serious, but what are you going to do? <laughs>